I mean, if you're a Christian and think you should nuke the religious sites of other people as a way of promoting the gospel, you are nuts. Okay? You are crazy. Okay? That is not Christian. Um, where did I put this? <sighs> Sometime Tuesday afternoon, the following email uh, came into our contact uh, folder. Here's what it says. Dr. Robert Morey challenges James White to a public debate on one. Is the threat of destroying the Kaaba a viable military tool in the West's psychological warfare with radical Islam? Two, where in scripture is there any basis for calling the military threat of, of, of a destroying the Kaaba a sin, all capitals? Three, where in scripture is there any basis for demanding repentance, all capitals, for the military threat of destroying the Kaaba? Four, is the use of ad hominem name-calling, stupid, ignorant, etc., a valid argument against the military threat of the destruction of the Kaaba? There was a return address that looks valid to us anyways, uh, to Dr. Robert Morey. I fairly quickly um, put up a Facebook response there are a lot of there 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 aren't very many things that leave me speechless. Um but that was that was definitely one of them. That was definitely one of them. Um I I I just I, I don't want to spend more time on absurdities than we have to spend on absurdities. But Unfortunately, this was followed up on Twitter, uh, I think the next day, with one of Maury's students who started off going, what, what's so big about d destroying a building? And I'm like, um, you do realize that there are, it's not out in the desert by itself, right? I mean, there are lots and lots of people around it's uh it's in mecca and um there's almost ne never a time when there isn't anybody around oh collateral damage oh okay uh so it's so the I, the issue of actually murdering people is relevant well it's you know collateral damage collateral damage and i guess that wasn't the only guy only guy that was that was going yeah it sounds like Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, that, that, that's, that should be something that the, the West, you know, hangs over everybody's head. A number of people point out, and I, I, I sort of mentioned it in passing. Um, you, you do realize, because notice what it says. Um, is the threat of destroying the Kaaba a viable military tool? In the West, psychological warfare with radical Islam. Now, immediately, I go back to the original quotations from Mori. What was he talking about? He was talking about destroying the Kaaba. Why? So that the fifth pillar could not be fulfilled. That's religious, not military. That's a religious thing. So don't, don't, don't try to change the subject to avoid the fact that you're talking about using weapons of mass destruction against a religion on a religious basis. That's what you're talking about doing. And you're talking about doing this within the context of being a Christian leader, a Christian minister, which sort of puts you in the same uh, mindset and behavior realm is the Taliban. Really does. Just the Christianized version of it. Um, but 
do, maybe he's not aware of this. Um, oh yeah, the same troublemaker in channel um, did point out that at, at a later point in that conversation, the guy said, well, I always heard Maury say bombing, not nuking. Yeah, it's that that's that's a big difference. Um, okay. Anyway, maybe maybe Dr. Mori's not aware of this. Um, but you you do realize that there are many Muslim groups, and in fact, the most radicalized Muslim groups want to destroy the Kaaba. You, you you're not aware of that? You, you don't know of the many plots. The, the attempts, the building itself has been torn down and rebuilt a number of times. Okay. Um, and the whole issue of the fifth pillar is irrelevant now anyways, because technically there aren't enough places to go on Hajj for all the Muslims in the world to do it anyways. So that's, that, all that is just the idea that Islam would end if the fifth pillar couldn't be fulfilled is just, it, it's absurd. Um, it comes from just not thinking or just being so radically Islamophobic that you, your, your thought processes become twisted. But Maury is suggesting what ISIS suggests, <laughs> um, which wants, wants to destroy the Kaaba because they view it as uh, a place of idolatry. And the Saudis are constantly having to guard against suicide bombings and, and everything else of the Kaaba. So why say, is the threat of destroying the Kaaba a viable military tool in the West psychological warfare with radical Islam when you're actually agreeing with radical Islam? And in fact, they would think it would be pretty cool if you pulled it off. Could you explain that? No, let's not bother. Um, where in scripture is there any base for calling the military threat of destroying the Kaaba a sin? Um, what is a sin is for any person who pretends to want to see the salvation of Muslim people to think that that could be accomplished using weapons of mass destruction. There are little boys and girls right around the Grand Mosque in Mecca. And you want to vaporize them? For what exactly again? To accomplish what? To destroy the fifth pillar of Islam? This somehow is going to cause Islam to collapse? Um, and in regards to number four, it's if what I was saying, if, if evidently Dr. Mori does not understand uh, what ad hominem argumentation is. Ad hominem argumentation would be Dr. Mori is so stupid that what he says about Islam is wrong. Okay, that would be ad hominem. Because I'm basing my argument upon an argument against the man, ad hominem. Saying that it is stupid to say that nuking the Kaaba would destroy Islam is not an ad hominem argument. If you can't tell a difference between the two, you haven't done much study in the field of argumentation. Now, I generally don't refer to people's ideas as stupid, but there are some ideas that are just simply stupid. They are, they are beneath a level of any meaningful respect. And yes, clearly, when someone has evidenced an ability to do meaningful work in certain areas, and then in this area shows such outrageous disregard for every level of rationality, truth, scripture, Christian behavior, everything. Um, yeah, that, that's where stupid um, uh, comes in at that particular point in time. So, where in scripture is there any base for demanding repentance for the military threat of destroying the government? Anybody who, who cannot understand, you know, look, to all of you Bob Murray fans, that, that think it's that, that I'm soft because I want to take off the table the threat of nuking the Kaaba? Let me just tell you something. 
I cannot begin to understand for a second how anyone could have spent any time whatsoever on their knees praying to the Lord of the harvest to bring the gospel and use me to do it, bring the gospel to the Muslim people, to reveal Jesus Christ to the Muslim people. I cannot begin to believe that anyone who has any meaningful compassion in their hearts for the Muslim people could even begin to contemplate the foolishness of the concept under discussion here. I, I, I can't believe it. I can't begin to understand it. If you are praying for those people, you are not going to want to nuke those people. And I can't see any way for you to say, oh, yes, 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 I want to pray for them. I, I pray for them and I weep for them and I, I'm doing everything I can uh, to, to present the gospel of grace to them while holding over their head the possibility of nuking the Kaaba just so that we can nuke the Kaaba because it wouldn't accomplish anything. Well, it, it would. It would accomplish something. It would, it would unite Muslims around the world in a way they've never been united before. That's, that's painfully obvious. But uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I do not. Your, your, your actions are speaking louder than your words. Your concepts the incoherence of your concepts are speaking much louder than your words. You can pretend all you want that you have a heart for the Muslim people, uh, but if you want to vaporize them before you even get an opportunity to evangelize them, then how are you different than Al-Qaeda? How are you different than ISIS? I don't see any difference. You, you just, you're just the westernized version and you make a, and, and, and this is an interesting insight. I find your claim to believe the gospel to be as incoherent as many of my Muslim friends find the claims of the Al-Qaeda murderers and the ISIS murderers to be Muslim. They they go that that can't be that can't be my faith. Those people are doing things that are totally against what I understand my faith. Well, I think it's far clearer, far clearer, for a Christian to look at the New Testament and go, hmm, where does the New Testament give warrant uh, for for Christians to promote the use of weapons of mass destruction as a means of, well, it, I guess that couldn't be evangelization, huh? Are you just assuming that Mecca has been thoroughly evangelized and they've, they've all turned their back? Uh, and so we, we can just assume they've all heard the gospel with clarity. And so now we can, what's that? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, beyond God's reach. Well, maybe. Um, I see you in the same way that they see them. And I, I, and I get the feeling that most of you who take this perspective, you don't see differences between Muslims anyways. They're just, they're just all the same. And you, you just, you're, you're one of those that always gets angry when I try to point out the differences between Muslims. No, 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 no. One big monolith. One, they're all the same, and if they pretend they're not, then they're just trying to fool you. It's just it's takia, you know. And my experience in the past continues to be my experience today. There's no reasoning with folks like that. There's no reasoning. People go, well, you should have, you should have an argument that can punch through that. No, if, if, if there's any meaningful argument... Uh, requires reason on the part of the person to whom you are presenting the argument. If there's no reasoning going on, 
argumentation is irrelevant. And there are people on both sides. Thankfully, they're the minority in the fringe, but there are people on both sides where the rational processes have stopped. Now, have they stopped? Why have they stopped? And I've said before, remember Christopher Hitchens used to say, religion poisons everything. Uh, he was wrong. False religion poisons a bunch of stuff. So he was close, but he missed the important part about true religion and true faith. Um, but religion can poison many things. And that religion can take many different forms, many different forms. And there is a, a nasty military, any type of militarized Christianity is going to be a perversion. Because what, what, what's the power that has been given to the church? Is it a, is it a, is it a missile? Is it a bomb? Is it a plane? Is it some type of modern weapon of mass destruction? What is, what's the one power that's been given to the church? Power of the gospel. That's it. That's all we've been given. Only the gospel can change hearts and minds. There's nothing else that can do it. Nothing else that can do it. So there's a fundamental distrust or abandonment of belief in the power of the gospel when you start looking for other things. Or certainly a redefinition of what the church is supposed to be about. But I, I really do start to wonder at times how many of those who will speak out and calling for radical actions like this have spent one moment in sincere prayer to God that the gospel of Jesus Christ would be caused to go forth with power amongst the Muslim people. Now, of course, as soon as I mentioned that, I had some anti-Calvinist zealot uh, write back going, oh, you're more loving than your God who doesn't elect all of them. I was like, oh, social media. It, the, the whole thing. You know, it used to just be comment boxes where the ig internet ignorance aggregators. Now it's, Twitter and Facebook as well. It's that just as soon as a thought crosses your mind, no matter how facile, incoherent, or erroneous it might be, we can now express it. <laughs> just let's make sure the whole world uh, catches our uh, our thoughts. Yeah, but there you go. I I have absolutely, positively no interest whatsoever. And I, I cannot, well, first of all, as I said last time, given how Dr. Mori has debated, uh, has behaved in debates past, I have no basis upon which to believe that there, that any uh, agreed to set of parameters, behaviors, anything like that would ever be followed, ever be followed. Um, but more importantly than that, when I engage in debate, I want to debate something that has some meaningful content to it. And there is, from a Christian perspective, there is no meaningful content to the assertions that Robert Morey has made. Now, I know he's trying to dial him back to say, well, the West has to have in its psychological warfare with radical Islam, even though radical Islam Many of those groups want to destroy the Kaaba, but, uh, you know, again, let's not worry about the disconnectedness of these thoughts. Um, trying to dial it back to just a military type thing. That's not what was said. The original statement had to do with ending Islam's ability to fulfill the fifth pillar and that that non-fulfillment of the fifth pillar would be the end of Islam. And that's just, at its best, naive and at its worst, well, look, um, let, let me put it this way. Any 
Christian who would seek to engage in apologetics to the Muslim people, who will not openly and without reservation condemn any kind of threat to use military force in a religious context on either side should have no place at the table of discussion whatsoever. None. On either side. And that means if you as a Muslim will not condemn what is being done to Christians in Pakistan and Afghanistan and Muslim countries, then you shouldn't have a place to table either. But to be consistent, I've got to look at the Lulus we have on our side and go, I condemn that. That is, and, and here's why, this is not Christian behavior. This is not Christian belief. This is not consistent with the proclamation of the gospel. I condemn it and reject it. And I think anyone who does not do that should have no place in, in, the, in the discussions at all. And it needs to go both directions. It needs to go both directions. Uh, I think any Muslim standing up to engage in meaningful dawah and debate uh, should be more than... Uh, there, was a, there was a suicide bombing at, a, at the largest, um, I think it was Coptic church in Egypt what, five days ago, something like that, uh, 47, I forget how many people lost their lives. Um, that needs to, th there should be no question that that kind of behavior would be condemned. Uh, that you do not use military force in theological issues. Now, does that raise questions about Muhammad's examples and his campaigns and things that happen. That's debatable. We can debate it. I think there are questions about that. But those things have to be on the table. And we, in the modern period, must be very clear where we're starting from. And as a Christian, I say to the Muslim people, our message for you is of a Lord who rules over you. He is your creator. He is your maker. But today is a day of salvation. If you will turn to him in repentance and faith, you will find him to be a perfect savior. He is your Lord. You need to confess him as such. And you will find in him everything that you're not finding in the religious duties that you fulfill, but do not bring you peace. That Jesus came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. And therefore, anyone who claims to be representing Jesus, who would be willing to see life indiscriminately wiped out through the use of weapons of mass destruction, is either not a Christian at all, or is a Christian in a deep state of ignorance or rebellion or deception. Those are the only possibilities. Those are the only possibilities. And so, anyway.